best builds for every class that can at least clear tier 100 of the pit and beyond. With a little bonus Necromancer build at the very end, that's probably the most fun build to play this season. First, the Barbarian, Mr. PXX clearing a 126 without the Holy Bolt. And the most notable feature about the Bush Barbarian that I'm not used as a Necromancer player is dude is barely chunking HP down. I mean, sure, in this situation there, but as he's going through, he's mostly just simply staying alive, leaping around and then bashing the hell out of opponents. And damn, are those some nice damage numbers just flying? I mean, we're, we're just seeing hundreds of millions on the screen going there. And the gameplay is very secure. I mean, you essentially just leap in, bash away, then leap again, bash away and keep on doing that. And while you're in the boss fight, you're essentially just standing on the dude. And whenever you're about to get hit one of these Lilith auras, he's just leaping away from it. I do know that this stupid ground effect can be like absolutely annoying, but he's more or less just standing at the dude. And whenever he's about to hit, boop, 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 fantastic. And the best part is finally we see the pain gorger's gloves being used damaging enemies with a cast of a non-basic skill marks them for three seconds and when a basic skill first hits a marked enemy the basic skill echoes and does 200 percent increased damage and since bash is that basic skill you get that going on boosting it to do more damage than ever with moonrise for bonus attack speed putting you into a blood rage with bonus movement speed and even more attack damage then you're reducing the damage that's incoming with Aspect of Might. That's another 20% damage reduction. Plenty good. Together with a Harlequin Crest on another 20%. And then the Undying Aspect that actually heals you on hit. So you're going to go bash, 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 heal, 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 bash, bash. <laughs> Slam on Aspect of the Iron Warrior for another 35% damage reduction. With more attack speed on basic skills with Rapid. The Aspect of Inner Calm to get more damage as you're standing still. And lastly, a bunch of Bash Cleave, Bash Cleave, Bash Cleave, Bash Cleave Tamperings. This will land in the description below. No worries. Next up, we get the Windshear Druid by Ace of Spades, which does look a bit boring because it essentially just windshears. I mean, <laughs> sure, you do some yell in between. Don't get me wrong, but it's just literally windshear, 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 windshear. The good part, though, is that you're pretty much undying, as he tells himself. You can see the HP not really moving. You're dashing a wee bit around but you're mostly just having complete control of the battlefield. Yes, Druids don't have it the best right now. This is a tier 116 clear, but a 100 will just fall like there's no tomorrow. And especially the boss fight looks incredibly simple because you're just really standing there, blasting away. And as it seems, he's not even going out of the boss damage. But like, you would have expected him to dash out of the echo because I was getting sweaty palms here, but he just stood in the boss echo. I mean, he just he just literally full on tanked it. and <laughs> didn't give a damn because he probably is playing the aspect of the inner calm. Let's investigate. You know what? I was wrong on that. We have the aspect of Moonrise, which again gives you this stacking attack speed buff on the basic skill and the bonus damage with aspect of might for the same damage reduction as the barbarian had. Hatchmaster's aspect as you're doing a basic skill to get the most damage because you have the most resource on cast. It's quite nice. Then Hectic for reducing your cooldowns with basic skills. So you always have the Blood Howl up to essentially heal yourself, the debilitating Roar to, to reduce the enemy's damage, or to just slam out Cyclone Armor. Now, the key, the key aspect is probably the aspect of the Calm Breeze. Windshear now deals poisoning damage over four seconds. Lucky hit, Windshear has up to a 12% chance to fully restore your spirit. That lucky hit doesn't matter, but being able to do poisoning damage on top of that with all the things that Druid can deal and the aspect of adaptability, not for the resource gain back, but just for another 80% increased damage if you're above 50% maximum essence with a basic skill, which is kind of like always because you're never below 50% resource if you're only using a basic skill and not a core skill to burn resource. Now to the Necromancer on tier 126, no holy bolts, and it is unsurprisingly the Golem. And if you look at the cooldown here of the Golem, you can see how he's absolutely spamming this away. That is Mr. Burim here right now. <laughs> We're talking about absolutely end of the line, top gear, double greater affixes, perfect masteries and all that stuff to get here. But currently with my golem build, which is mostly eight out of 12, some golem mastery gear, not the best of the best. I can do a tier 100 in four to five minutes. So even with not the perfect gear, this build is more than able to get you through 
any kind of challenge. Keep in mind though, you should have at least have 30 to 40,000 HP going on and then drink the Antivenin potion and the Elixir of Fortitude to just feel safe. Because I mean, Necromancer doesn't have very good barrier production unless you're playing the Bone Storm. But if you're playing the Bone Storm, you're gonna be lacking substantial amounts of damage because Army of the Dead is just such a fantastic skill. And this is currently, and we're playing the Army of the Dead on the Amulet for the bonus damage, together with the bonus attack speed and attack speed on your rings to make sure that you get the 100% stack for the leader node, plus the corpse tendrils for the 50%. This is a bit confusing because the 50% doesn't go over on your minions at this point, so they're not actually doing the bonus damage, but it does seem to work for him. With the Shadow Blight key passive giving you another 240% and then the minion attack speed tempering on your weapon, followed up by the Skeletal Priest healing you too as you do over summon your minions, and at the same time your Warriors doing shadow damage now to stack up that shadow black key passive sufficiently. And then your minions gain another 40% damage multiplier. You get damage reduction. And lastly, more skeletons with a lot of cooldown reduction happening as well. Keep in mind, no Harlequin Crest is not an option. It does not boost the damage of your golem because that is not a skill that can be boosted by skill points. Rogue looks like brilliant fun. Dashing around and heart seekering in. This is Morana right now. 131 pit. And his game is kind of dark, I'll have to say. <laughs> Barely being able to see anything. But he's essentially just spamming heart seeker and completely living inside the opponents with surprisingly not taking much damage. The best part is it's once again a build that actually works with a basic skill so you don't really have to worry about your energy production because you're essentially spamming away your basic skill while you're making sure to stay alive with your concealment smoke bomb caltrops just standing there and not getting overwhelmed and honestly the boss fight looks pretty good especially since you're having dash to just move yourself out of any kind of danger right there's that boss echo happening and he just dashes to narnia to get kind of out pops open to, <laughs> to show the amount of attack power life and armor he has i mean it's only thirty-eight thousand life if i would go in with thirty-eight thousand life i would just vanish but hey he doesn't seem to care i mean he even keeps standing like there inside the boss echo just cocky thinking that he won't be getting hit and absolutely blasts away and staggers the boss. That's kind of fantastic. And the way it works is kind of similar to the other two basic attack builds. We have adaptability again for that 120% bonus damage when cast above 50% resource, no problem. With the inner calm as he's standing still to do more damage. And that's also where you see him going in, drop the smoke bomb, make sure he's kind of like safe and then just blasts away as he gets the triple damage super attack. We then Surprisingly, the Ring of Elements, which boosts Fire, Lightning, Physical, and then Cold, Poison, Shadow damage in 7 seconds rotations. Then we get the Rapid for the bonus attack speed with the Atch Master on bonus damage with full resource. He always has full resource, followed up by the Moonrise aspect. So all these basic skill attack builds, kind of similar. Wish the Necromancer had a way to play one, but we don't really have it, to be honest. Having a chance to daze your opponents for bonus daze damage, and you actually deal 20% increased damage to dazed enemies. And surprisingly, you're actually dazing them with a smoke grenade. So that 20% bonus damage is kind of like always not even lucky hit it. Then you're dealing more damage to stunned or knocked down enemies, and you have a chance to stun or knock them down. And if you grenade them, they have a chance to be frozen, and you deal 25% bonus damage against frozen enemies. Lastly, this one is actually using the Harlequin Crest because your basic skill gets vastly boosted by that as actually every other skill because you're using kind of everything in this build. So Harlequin Crest, not a must, but really if you want to cap this out hard, fantastic. Though this is a 131 pit, so if you just want to do a 100, I don't think you'll need Harlequin Crest. Lastly, Makuna on the Sorcerer, and then we get that Secret Necromancer build, just absolutely blasting away with those fireballs. And if I see that correctly, he's not even playing all the skills. I mean, we got that flame shield that keeps you essentially infinitely alive. We got the bolts that are absolutely just being spammed away. And then he just teleports and that's it. And that's a 116 pin. The same kind of goes for the boss fight. I mean, he just stands there AFK in front of the dude, spams the flame shield and does not even move. I want to call this silly, but I'm going to be honest, like this is probably the absolute cap you can do right now with the build and you're kind of like forced to play this way. So I, 
I guess it is what it is. You know, I mean, if it works, it works. If you can clear a pit like this, still not doing the crazy amount of damage. I mean, he might not be taking taking damage, but the damage is quite low. I mean, it's it's silly, but hey, it works. I like it. I have no complaints. <laughs> and right now, and he's rocking quite some equipment for that. This aspect of the Moonrise to boost the basic skill. The Tal Rasha's loop stacking all the different elements on top of each other for the bonus of multiplicative damage. Adaptability for the bonus damage again as you cast above 50% Essen. Storm Swell where you deal bonus damage to Volumanis while you have Barrier. And since you have your Flame Shield always up, you always have the Barrier. Inner Calm, you're standing still. <laughs> you're literally standing still. You're not moving. Concussive Strikes to daze your opponent for the bonus damage and you should be like hitting enough then you need the flame weaver gloves because casting firebolt through a firewall causes it to split into bolts and then you bolt away like crazy and the harlequin crest to boost essentially everything with a firebolt enchantment and the teleporter which kind of like makes you have the firewall up and then you bolt and then you flame shield and then firewall bolt flame shield and that that seems to be the gameplay loop there now, lastly, my favorite build this season, and that is the Bone Spirit Necromancer. I do have my own version, which already cleared a 105 dungeon, but this is the king of this build because he has all the gear. We're talking about perfect maximum resource gear. And the fun part right now is he has 275 essence. That means if he's using the Banished Lord's Talisman, which gives you a free overpower, critical strike, because he has a 100% critical strike chance, uh, if you use 275 essence, well, he always gets that. So every single bone spirit that you can see here is an overpower, critical stride, super boosted bone spirit on 275 essence. And every point of essence is 4% more damage. So 275 times 4%, which leads in this case to 500 million plus bone spirits. Sure, you can't spam them. You can only cast them every second, every third second but i mean like with that damage output you kind of not asking yourself if that's actually good or bad because it's fantastic and the crazy part is i've seen him hit for over a billion damage bone spirit if everything is stacking up fun part is you have the skeletal defenders which take 99 percent of reduced damage uh-huh yes to essentially boost your essence up all the way but to also have something to just tank for you and he's just absolutely blasting away what's the boss fight that's the malice. That's 129 million. And we're stacking everything up. There was like 200 million plus, right? And then you're just dashing around and you're just essentially eating these absolutely high powered monstrosity. And that was a 300 million just being hit. I think another 300, another 300 million, another 300 million, 400 million. <laughs> Perfection. It's probably the most fun shotgun build because that's what you're doing. Just shotgunning everyone. Thing is, in order to get that 275 essence, you need night perfect gear. Maximum resource greater affix, maximum resource greater affix. I don't have this. I'm currently at 200 essence. Every second bone spirit is an overpower crit for me. And I do around 300 million to maximum 400 million. So I'm not getting like these six, 700 million that he has in between. But if you have this, then you can play the ossified essence key passive to do more critical strike damage the more essence you have. Have the corpse trundles to multiply this up together with the aspect of torment to give you an insane amount of essence regeneration that you actually every two seconds full essence again after casting with you gain seven maximum essence per active minions six active minions 42 more essence kind of nice banish lord's talisman with a free overpower super critical strike multiplying up and going crazy with a crazy amount of resource generation as well Followed up by more skeletons with a blood moon breaches that you get a 70 percent of bonus damage multiplier on top more damage while barrier and the fun part is five to core skills seven to bone spirit and another three to macabre skills yes and that's actually a terrible chest he's he's missing out on another three ranks so he's already having plus seven he's already having plus plus 12 into bone spirit and then he's only having plus three yeah weak he could that could be plus five or plus six with a greater affix again that's how high you can actually stack up the bone spirit yes and lastly you also get a cool amount of barrier on top fantastic ladies and gentlemen what are you playing right now who's your favorite if you want now some general season four tips or struggling to understand minions there's two videos that might help you with each of these topics enjoy thank you for watching thank you for being with me